Armstrong's bekentenis die kan hem miljoenen gaan kosten. De verzekeringsmaatschappij SCA, een maatschappij in Dallas, Texas, die eist 12 miljoen dollar van hem. SCA betaalde de bonussen die Armstrong kreeg voor zijn Tour de France overwinningen. En de advocaat van die organisatie SCA is Jeffrey Tillotson. En hem vroeg ik... Uh, toen hij ondervroeg Armstrong in 2005, toen stond hij al onder Ede. En toen bezwoer Armstrong nog dat hij geen doping had gebruikt. Vanavond vroeg ik aan advocaat Tillerson wat hij vond van het Armstrong-interview. Het was jaw-dropping en quite stunning. Because everything he had denied in his sworn testimony to me under oath in the US, he admitted to Miss Oprah Winfrey within the first five minutes of his interview. So the contrast between the years of denials that I had seen and been part of and how quickly those denials fell apart on TV last night really made me and my clients' heads spin, literally. Did you almost ask him the same questions as Oprah Winfrey did? I did. Uh, your viewers may recall Miss Winfrey asked a series of questions at the very beginning of the interview over whether he had doped, used EPO, cheated in the Tour de France's, and he said yes, yes, yes. I asked him virtually those same questions under oath in sworn testimony, and he had vehemently denied them. So seeing that contrast was rather remarkable uh, and stunning to us. When he was lying to you, did you have the impression that he was lying, or is he an extremely good actor who at the time gave you answers that you bought? Well, he, he was very passionate in what he told me uh, under oath, and he mixed it with um, criticism and almost belittling me at times. You might have seen some of the clips where he would say things, how many times do I have to tell you? And how can I be more clear to you than I never doped? He mixed in his stories about cancer and why would he ever let down his many cancer victims by lying to buttress his credibility. So I found him a very compelling actor, but I also knew what other people were saying about what he had done, and I'd seen some of the other evidence. And I knew that he was not telling the truth, but I was amazed how much of an act he could put on about it during that testimony. Right. Now, your client is SCA Promotions, and this company paid Lance Armstrong $12 million for his uh, three victories in the Tour de France. Do you think that you will recoup that money now, or do you expect a legal battle? I don't know. That's really up to Mr. Armstrong and his uh, team of uh, lawyers and managers. We paid him because he won three Tour de France races and told us he was a clean rider under oath. He's now admitted to us he lied and he's been stripped of those titles. So from my client's perspective, Mr. Armstrong has no legal right and frankly moral right to keep that money and we believe it should be returned. It's up to him whether he voluntarily returns it or whether we'll have to go to court to force him to give it back. How do you characterize Lance Armstrong after this interview yesterday evening? What do you make of him? Well, it was tragic, I think, in many ways. Uh, such an iconic figure and inspiration to so many was so quickly and completely uh, swept off the pedestal last night of fame. From a personal standpoint, from myself and my client, um, you saw him last night admit or acknowledge that he was a bully and that he berated people. We were squarely within that, and we certainly felt all of the intimidation he could throw at people. And I, as the lawyer, personally saw um, the human cost that this took on witnesses like Betsy Andrew, Emma O'Reilly, Frankie Andrew, David Walsh, who were collateral damage in our lawsuit, who were attacked simply because they told the truth in our case. So we mixed, you know, you mix all that in and it was a difficult night for us. There, there wasn't joy that this happened, but there was satisfaction that the legal process in the U.S. Um, was righted. Very clear. Jeffrey Tillerson in Texas, thank you so much for your comments tonight.